Friends, welcome to Easy Pediatrics webinar on neonatal jaundice part 2. Friends, prematurity or the lower the gestation, the more the effect of bilirubin toxicity, more the likelihood of a neurodevelopmental poor outcome. Hence, there are many things what we have discussed up till now. We have been taught up till now that connectors at lower bilirubin levels is a very common phenomenon simply because lower the gestational age the poorer the blood brain barrier would be however most of the bilirubin charts are based upon the weight while AAP now also states that bilirubin albumin ratio also needs to be looked at while treating or managing a newborn a premature newborn with bilirubin On one end, there is another school of thought that bilirubin is an antioxidant chemical, hence its antioxidant properties will be helpful in growth and development of a premature baby, so we must be generous enough to allow bilirubin to rise to certain level so that these benefits can be taken care of. On the other end, we are also worried that bilirubin's toxicity would lead to a poor neurodevelopmental outcome in a premature baby. So, most of the newborn ICUs nowadays go for an aggressive phototherapy for better neurodevelopmental outcome of premature babies while treating them for jaundice. However, some of the reports, specifically by head ultrasound, noticed that phototherapy when given for a longer period of time to the premature baby led to alterations in the blood flow in the brain. Let us now see the criteria for initiation of phototherapy in premature newborns. These criteria have been adapted from textbook of Fendroff and Martin. On the left hand side of the screen, there is a birth weight column and the other parts are been divided into healthy and sick premature babies criteria. Say for example, a less than 1 kg baby would need a phototherapy between 5 to 7 mg per deciliter of total bilirubin while similar baby if in a sick state will require the phototherapy to be considered at little lower values of total bilirubin like 4 to 6. Most of the newborn ICUs consider for exchange transfusion along with this column. We also follow in our unit the similar criteria. However, in a practical life or a practical situation, remembering all these values would be difficult. So, an easier a rule of thumb is followed for consideration of phototherapy or exchange transfusion in a premature baby. According to that, the phototherapy is considered in a healthy preterm newborn, specifically if the bilirubin levels are 0.75% of the birth weight of the baby in grams, while if the baby is sick, we will consider it at 0.50% of the birth weight in grams. Extent transfusion is considered when the bilirubin level is more than 1% of the birth weight in grams, for example. A 890 gram baby will need a phototherapy at 4.45 mg per deciliter of bilirubin, while exchange transfusion must be considered when it crosses more than 8.9 mg per deciliter of bilirubin. Well friends, this is called a rule of thumb, but I don't know whose thumb it is. UK the NICE guidelines have been followed. They provide NICE Excel sheets in which you have to enter all the data of the baby and also enter the gestation of the particular baby. According to the gestation of the baby, which you fill up here in this particular corner, there will be a chart which will be generated in which you have two different lines for consideration. The lower line is for the phototherapy and the upper line is for the exchange transfusion, meaning that the gestation 
based criteria are used by NICE guidelines for the premature babies. When we consider the phototherapy, there are two schools of thought, aggressive and conservative. A long-term study done by Morris et al. suggested that the rate of neurodevelopmental impairment alone was significantly reduced when an aggressive protocol was followed. However, this aggressive phototherapy protocol did not significantly reduce the rate of death or neurodevelopmental impairment. So one need to think about it while considering an aggressive phototherapy. American Academy of Pediatrics has recently been suggesting that bilirubin albumin ratio is of great importance. They have given the levels of bilirubin and albumin ratio to be considered for different gestations as depicted here in this particular chart. You can very well download it also from the AAP website. One of the very interesting study based upon the bilirubin albumin ratio is called the BAR trial. This BAR trial looked at the management of hyperbilirubinemia in a premature baby to improve the neurodevelopmental outcome. Recently, the conclusion of this study has arrived and they have concluded that additional use of bilirubin albumin ratio in the management of a premature baby for hyperbilirubinemia did not improve the neurodevelopmental outcome. However, all the other conclusions one need to look at in detail by looking and reading this article live online. Most of our term babies usually follow a classical timeline. The first question which often the teachers ask the students is whether this is pathological or physiological. But my dear friends, one of the commentary which was been published by Measles in pediatrics was really very interesting. It said, what's in a name, a physiological or a pathological jaundice? And really, in practical day-to-day -day life, when we consider a term baby with a jaundice, what we need to define first is severity rather than the name of physiological or pathological. So I would suggest that one need to look at the levels of bilirubin and associated risk factors for that first. Most of the authors and researchers have agreed that total serum bilirubin of 30 mg or more is really hazardous and it would lead to toxic effects on the brain. When we talk about how to approach in more than 35 week baby or nearly term baby and term baby in classical phase or this phase where we get bilirubin rise most of the times where the bilirubin start rising up two or three days and keep on rising for five or six days and then it drops down that is what more classical phase we know here the first important step we would like to do is define the severity that is why doing a total serum bilirubin or measuring it by transcutaneous bilirubinometry to lo locate and know it how much the level of bilirubin is this can also help by clinical means by looking at the Kremer staging of the bilirubin. One need to look at the risk factor identification also. For example, risk factors like RH isoimmunization, ABO isoimmunization, G6PD status, etc. After that, the second step comes in the way that is we need to subject this particular total serum bilirubin levels to AAP normograms or threshold or whatever the region specific or the unit specific policy is. We need to treat the baby accordingly based upon the nomogram suggestions like to go for phototherapy or exchange transfusion. After that, we need to investigate it thoroughly while ongoing treatment is on. We need to investigate this baby for different things which will define etiology and diagnosis of the baby and also help us out to locate for the prognosis of the baby. AAP guidelines for phototherapy 
in more than 35 week gestations is the below normogram. In this normogram, different three different dashed lines are given, which have been for different different categories of the babies. The bold lowermost line is for the infants at higher risk. Those are less uh, less than 37 weekers, 35 to 37 weekers, and also having risk factors like RH isoimmunization, ABO, or a G6PD deficient status like that. The second dashed line is for the infants at medium risk, more than 38 weeker, with risk factors, or 35 to 37 weeker late preterm babies who are well and not having risk factors. The uppermost line is for the infants at lower risk, those are more than 38 weeks or term gestated babies. AB guidelines for action transfusion is same as it was for the phototherapy consideration. However, the levels of bilirubin here are different. The first 24 hour line or the cutoff values are in dashed simply because of there is an uncertainty in this particular normogram for the first 24 hours to follow. So one must have their unit policy what to do in this first 24 hours when our early onset jaundice babies do come across. If you are bored to look at all these graphs and you are tax savvy, nowadays all these resources are available online or within your smartphone. You can go for this online resource called Billy Tool. The Billy Tool is based upon the AP nomograms and it follows them very correctly. You can use them by downloading the app on your smartphone or going directly online onto the website of Billy Tool. After that, we come to how to treat this unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Friends, we have got four different modalities here. Number one is phototherapy, standard and age-old therapy. We'll look at into details of this in a while. The second mode is exchange transfusion where we change the blood of the baby. Third is IVIG for which we have already talked a lot in the part one of this webinar series. Last is things which have been experimental and there are not much of evidence available to incorporate them as a real treatment or through which we can gain something. They are metalloporphyrins, phenobarbiton and clofibrat. We request not to use them till the evidence is available. Let's see now what is phototherapy recommendations. We have got four different varieties of phototherapy right now in the market. First one is LED phototherapy. The LED phototherapy is highly available at all the market stores, specifically for the newborn phototherapy purpose. This LED phototherapy is having high irradiance. It works on the very low power consumption. That's the unique selling point of this LED phototherapy. However, one must consider the higher cost factor of the LED phototherapy. And one must not forget that LED is a cool light. So even if the baby is under the phototherapy, baby is likely to become hypothermic. So there is, should be an additional source of keeping the baby warm like warmer should be there over the baby. So the second phototherapy mode is CFL phototherapy. Irradiance are just acceptable or as good as LED phototherapy. However, the life is definitely shorter than the LED phototherapy. Conventional tube or the tube light phototherapy is very popular age old thing. However, in the recent trends of LED or CFL phototherapy, they have gone a little backward. The tube light phototherapy, one must look at the flux of this particular equipment simply because the flux fluctuates over the period of time and usage of that particular tube light. So one must have a regular check of this flux by a flux meter of this tube phototherapy. One other thing we need to remember that tube light generates a lot of heat. 
So if the baby is under warmer and under phototherapy, there is a lot of heat generation which can lead to hypothermia in these babies and there will be increased insensible water loss in these babies that we need to keep in mind. Fiber optic phototherapy is commonly known as the wraparound billy blanket, the popular name for this particular phototherapy. Here a phototherapy is like a wrapped blanket available. It is wrapped around the newborn and this can be utilized at home. However, it provides another surface but covers less area. So it can be only used for moderate levels of bilirubin and not for those who require an intensive phototherapy. How to use the phototherapy most effectively? Let's see that. One must have to consider that the phototherapy light can only be effective if you are using the spectrum of 430 to 490 nanometer. So do choose that spectrum of light in your phototherapy. One must remember that the straight beams right on the baby should be at least of the intensity of 30 microwatt per centimeter square per nanometer. The peripheral irradiance of this phototherapy should be 4 microwatt per centimeter square per nanometer. To increase or intensify the phototherapy, one can reduce the distance between the phototherapy and the baby. Third way of do increasing it is to increase the surfaces from which you are giving phototherapy by making a multiple light source, one from the above, one from the below or one from this side. That will intensify the baby's phototherapy. The question arises is which phototherapy is best, CFL or an LED? Friends, up till now the evidence available suggests that both are, most of the, both are more or less equal and one can choose either of them based upon the regional and the unit factors. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. You can look at my websites in Gujarati language as depicted here. Remember that this is an easy pediatrics presentation and do not forget to send us your feedback. Thank you very much for your patient listening.